good evening dear student this is my first lecture and the topic is calculation of number of p pi p pi and p pi d pi bonds in a chemical compound for the calculation of p pi p pi bond and p pi d pi bonds you need know first about the hybridization and how to calculate the hybridization the basic concept behind it is first you have to calculate the steric number a steric number is the number of sigma bond and lone pair of electron on central atom if the steric number is 2 then the hybridization is sp if a steric number is 3 then hybridization is sp2 4 then sp3 5 then sp3d 6 then sp3d2 7 then sp3d3 one important note you have to remember it if the lone pair of electron are delocalized then you don't have to consider it in a steric number for example if you are asked to find the hybridization of this carbon atom where we can clearly see that the lone pair that is the negative charge on carbon atom is delocalized here the resonance is taking place so for the calculation of hybridization of this particular carbon we don't have to consider this negative charge as a steric number then the steric number will be one sigma bond here and two ch bond there is two hydrogen So three sigma bond plus zero lone pair equal to three, and this carbon will be sp two hybridized. Next, there is a question. Simple questions. We have to identify the hybridization of indicated atom in caffeine. It is the molecule of caffeine, and we have to find out the hybridization of indicated atom. first we have to find the hybridization of this nitrogen atom here nitrogen is singly bonded this side with this carbon there is one sigma bond and in double bond there is one sigma and one pi bond so there is two sigma bond associated with this nitrogen two sigma bond and there is one lone pair of electron on this nitrogen that is localized on it it is not delocalized so we have to consider it that is one that is overall steric number is 3 and the hybridization will be sp2 because as we have learned earlier if the steric number is 3 then hybridization is sp2 next this carbon here carbon is forming one sigma bond there is one other one sigma bond and there is one sigma and one pi and we know carbon does not have any lone pair of electron in it so only three a steric number that makes it sp2 hybridized so this carbon is also sp2 hybridized okay again this carbon here one sigma bond is there it is also from one sigma bond and there is one sigma and one pi bond there is no lone pair of electron on this carbon so there is three sigma bond and zero lone pair a steric number is 3 so the carbon is sp2 hybridized so there nitrogen was sp2 this carbon was also sp2 and this carbon is also sp2 hybridized in caffeine let's do some other examples in ammonia here is the molecule of ammonia where nitrogen is forming three sigma bond with three hydrogens there is three sigma bond and there is one lone pair that is localized on it so the steric number will be 3 plus 1 equal to 4 and the hybridization of this nitrogen will be sp3 again sio for molecule where silicon is bonded with four fluorine atoms and there is four sigma bonds and there is no lone pair on of electron on silicon because the outermost number of electrons 
that is valence electron is 4 for silicon and the steric number is 4 plus 0 that is 4 and hybridization is sp3 next is xcf2 here xenon has outermost 8 electrons and it is forming only 2 bonds so there are 6 electrons left and 6 electrons means 3 lone pair of electrons so there is 3 lone pair of electron and there is 2 sigma bond 1 sigma bond is here and 2 sigma bond is here and these are giving a steric number of 5 and so it is sp3 hybridized sp3d sorry hybridized one important thing is that this molecule is linear linear i mean key. the bond angle this is 180 degree these three lone pairs are oriented in a space forming bond angle of 120 120 and 120 making this molecule a linear molecule next is clo4 minus here chlorine has outermost seven electrons there is one minus so there is one o minus oxygen we have to connect one oxygen with one single bond and three oxygen with two uh, double bonds okay so there is three oxygen connected with double bonds and one oxygen is connected with single bonds so all the electrons of the chlorine are being used in the bonding so there is one negative charge also that i have given it to it on oxygen because this is singly bonded okay what is the steric number of this central atom there is only four sigma bond so there is four sigma bond there is zero lone pair on chlorine because all the electrons balance electrons has been used up in bonding so there is zero lone pair and the steric number is four that is sp3 hybridized now how to find whether this molecule so3 contains p pi p pi or p pi d pi and if it contains p pi p pi or p pi d pi how many p pi p pi or p pi d pi bonds are present in this molecule how, how we have to calculate or how we can find it out so let's see first of all i have to find the first step or step one is the find the hybridization of this sulfur so we can clearly see the sulfur outermost electron is six and it is forming six bonds three sigma bond and three pi bonds so in a steric number we consider only sigma bond so there is three there is zero lone pair on the sulfur atom so zero that is three three a steric number means this is sp2 hybridized okay now here we can if we have find it out that the sulfur is sp2 hybridized in this so3 molecule so we have three p orbital px py and pz okay the hybridization is sp2 so the two P orbitals let px py or py pz has been used up in hybridization so only one p orbital is left one p orbital we have left that will form pi bonds okay so one important i think you know the basic of formation of pi bonds pi bond is formed by lateral overlap where is sigma bond is formed by overlap on internuclear axis okay so pi bond is always formed by pure p orbitals so here one p orbital is left on this sulfur okay so one p orbital so one p orbital sulfur will 
use one of its p orbital in forming pi bond so let's this is the p orbital of oxygen and this is the p orbital of sulfur so this pi bond is p pi p pi now there are two more pi bonds and we have to find whether it is p pi p pi or p pi d pi oxygen has already p orbital left but sulfur does not have p orbital left so for formation of pi bond we know that pi bonds are formed only by p or d orbitals not by s orbitals so sulfur will use its d orbital that is d orbital of sulfur let me find what d orbital of sulfur will be used for forming two another pi bonds so these are the d orbitals then what we have concluded that the conclusion is that in so3 in so3 molecule there is one p pi p pi and two p pi d pi bonds where d orbital is of sulfur okay so this is end of my video lecture 1 and in next video lecture we will find out we will take a lot of examples and will determine the number of p pi p pi bonds and p pi d pi bonds in details thank you very much